Hi all, Shane here, or Longline67. Uh, this is a quick update on the trouble in the colonies. Uh, <laughs> sounds so weird when I try to say that word. Um, project update, where, where I'm at with this project. Um, I'm more or less finished my first two units, so we're just going to do a quick um, review where the army is at the moment. I've still have quite a few more units yet to do bef and before I even start the Continentals. So again, this is going to be a uh, an army based roughly on the Royal Irish uh, during the American War of Independence. So, uh, you remember these guys? These are the command, uh, command uh, sets. So you can actually see how big my tone is there. So, again, nice detail, all painted up, waiting for banners. So, that's my. Um, I'm playing a battalion strength, or battalion plus strength. Uh, so each unit represents a company, because more or less it's actually representing them almost man for man. Um, each unit numbers around 86 to 94 men, which is pretty close to what they would have been during the day, because many of the reg many of the battalions, actually no, battalions back then were much bigger, but many of the companies were under strength, especially in the War of Independence. The, the, the British had serious manpower issues during that war. So that's, that's going to be my colonel, my battalion colonel. Again, he can be used for a general if I'm playing bigger scale games. And then my first unit that we saw briefly in the painting challenge video. These are the elite of the army, which are the grenadiers. So again, quick look here. Sorry it's out of focus, but I have to come in very close. So these are the grenadiers. Again, very lot so. So there are four trays. Um, of troops making up the uh, combined grenadier battalion or company, should I say? Um, all grenadier units basically, like every company or battalion, had grenadiers, and what they would do is they'd amass all their grenadiers together to make a battalion of them. So this could, if it's using, we're playing a bigger game of regiments or brigade strengths. This could be a grenadier battalion or in normal um, battalion games this could be just a grenadier company so this is going to be used as a company so again there's about I think there's slightly more men in this I think there's about 100 troops in here so like if I bring it back up again I know it's out of focus my apologies but this camera here is manual zoom and once it's recording I can't do anything about it so they're all the same they're all the same same pose nice detail considering how small they are I don't have a coin. Like if I pull up this memory card, so there's your uh, scale indication. So the only like standout unit or models here are the little command. See by the drum there. There's one thing I forgot to add banners, but I um, don't really mind. I love the first fur caps. They'll be the uh, the elite of the army. I'm also going to intend on adding a German. Assassin or the Kaiser Heise, or get the Heise Kazal troops that were German mercenaries or well they weren't mercenaries they were actually um, private military contractors for the most part they were troops that were on loan from the uh, the principalities of Germany of Heise and Kazal or Kazal and their grenadiers have slightly different they have like a, a, a cloth um, meter or measure which is the cap they're wearing. Whereas the British Grenadiers, as you see here, have a fur cap. So they show that make for an interesting difference. And their uniforms are slightly different as well. So I'll show you the first infantry company I've got done. I've yet to add about maybe two to three more of these. Um, so I'm just going to start lining them up. I learned a few little things with these as well uh, from the last. Yeah, so I've accidentally. Um, uh, or sorry, I placed the ranks closer to the edge of the board. Um, so when I put the smoke markers, there's not a, a big noticeable gap between the front rank and the edge of the board, uh, the edge of the the tray that they're on. So let's do a quick pan of these. So these are these are nice little models. I really enjoy painting these. I kind of ha you have to get into the the uh, have to get into the um, the stone for painting these. these. This is batch painting at its most normal level. 
or most intense level because you know you're painting 96 troops in, in a go like so you need to kind of get into the zone for painting these so you don't burn out and take breaks and have your eyes straight now so here's the command um, stand because I'll be using black powder rules for playing with these are you looking forward to the rebellion or the revolution supplement that they've released especially for the American War of Independence so when I get a, a sizable force to play the scenarios for both armies we'll um, we'll do a play through the campaign that goes, that goes along with it so here's the command again riflemen or should I say musketeers or line infantrymen and the back you can see the sergeant on the left two flag bearers and a drummer and then standing behind or mounted behind them is the officer so he came the officer came from the mounted commander's pack so I just added him in the back to add a bit of um, character to the unit and also they can stand out the commander and also then I put the dates on each base so when I'm all old and grey I'm wetting myself um, I know when I did these and this is the last tray I'm working on so these are still a work in progress so this kind of gives you an idea of how I base my models so these are 20 by 40 trays MDF I love to smell MDF when, the, when it's laser cut it almost smells like kind of those weird kind of wood chips kind of barbecue almost smell um, I'm out of super glue so I'm actually mounted onto the base using no more nails I leave a small gap between both ranks so I can paint and glue down between the boat ranks. Um, there's a reason why this is only two ranks abreast, other than the three on the uh, the other trays. Is that there's just not enough musketeers um, to fill out the ranks. So I had to modify. Uh, the, there was too many. Um, there was too many packs of command um, strips. So uh, I, I believe when you make orders you can leave suggestions and if you just want one command strip they'll give you that and they'll make up the rest with soldier strips which is good. So that's what I'll do for the next thing. And then I added another officer uh, on the edge just to bulk out that unit and a line closer. Uh, line closers were basically the troops that were standing in between the ranks of the army. They're normally sergeants and corporals, but mostly sergeants, and their job is to um, keep the dressing of the unit, stop them from coming apart, uh, kind of direct the soldiers when under fire, so they can kind of stop guys from running away and what have you. So that's what he is. He's a line closer. So he'll be on. They'll be on the furry edge of my uh, of my army. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, it's not a. A lot. It's a lot of painting, and we'll all work onto them. Especially doing all the edges on their caps. And I got more six mil stuff on the way. I've got uh, a lot of American War, uh, Civil War stuff on the way, and I'll be getting plenty more War of Independence stuff as well. I'm possibly looking into doing Napoleonics, but uh, the 28 mil stuff is. I'm going to stick with that for a while. So thank you for watching. I hope this was uh, a good fit. And in the next fit, we'll be uh, working on more stuff when it arrives and we'll also be looking at uh, some American War Civil War stuff. So thanks for watching, happy modeling, happy gaming and stay watch out for those buses. Bye bye.